Well, good to have your company on the program. We had WA in Victoria a couple of weeks ago. Today, the turn of New South Wales in terms of redistribution. This is ahead of the federal election, and these are proposed boundaries. But what happens in these proposals usually ends up happening in the election proper. So what's transpired? Well, in New South Wales, because of a population drop, one seat had to go. That ended up being North Sydney. It was held by independent MP Kylie Tinker, TL MP, if you like, by 2.9%. It's now gone. The biggest uh, wad of that seat, if you like, section of it has ended up in Bradfield. And that margin from the sitting Liberal MP, Paul Fletcher, has now gone from 4.2 to 2.5%. So what will happen there? We'll talk about who will run and why in a moment. Ben Along, this is a seat nearby as well in Sydney, 1%. It was won by the ALP at the last election. Now it's a putative Liberal seat, but only 0.1%. So it's still a tight seat regardless Hughes is more interesting, arguably, because it's a Liberal seat by 7% according to the last election. That margin halved. It's now very much a marginal seat at 3.5%. And McKellar, this is another teal seat they took last time. 2.5% was the margin of Sophie Scombs back at that election. Now, according to the latest calculations, 3.3%. The rest of the redistributions as well, before we focus in on North Sydney, and when we take a look at some of these margins and where they've gone and the difference... Uh, they're going to make in the rest of these. Eden Moneros, we're getting out of Sydney now, 8.2%. It's down to 6.1% now. It might sound big, but at the last election, it was a massive swing to the ALP of about 8%. In other words, if there's a swing back, this 6.1% just makes it a little bit more gettable. Patterson, more gettable for the Liberal Party now, going from 3.3% down to 2.6%. In the regions, coal area as well. I'm sure that will be targeted by the Liberal Party, but Wentworth... Well, surely they won't bother here. 4.2% was the margin for Allegra Spender as an independent. Now, with the new boundaries, 9%. Massive margin. Parramatta just gets a bit more marginal. This is the one, of course, won by Andrew Charlton. So 46 down to 3.7%. As to what this looks like in the main shifts in and around Sydney, so we take a look at the map. Teal seats here, Labor seat, a Liberal seat. This is North Sydney, and this disappears. You can see what it takes in. It's essentially... Another teal seat, Warringah, a Liberal seat there, and some of Benelong. Not a lot of Benelong, so you'd probably rule out running there for Kylie Tink, who's effectively lost her seat if this proposal stands. She's not really going to run in Warringah, you wouldn't think, as well, given the margin in particular, and that's up against a, a fellow teal. So really the only option is Bradfield, and the problem here is that she would be up against another independent who ran last time. So Nicolette Bowl ran last time and ran pretty close compared to Paul Fletcher. So the margin, as we saw before, was only 4%. So she'd either have to ask her to move out of the way or perhaps run against her and cannibalise the independent vote. So that's the tricky element. If a whole part of her seat had maybe shifted further up and she had all of that, well, then she could argue, this is kind of my seat. As it is, it's been dispersed further than that. That makes it tricky as to what she will do next. What is she going to do next? She's so far just saying she's disappointed about the abolishing of her seat, at least the proposal of that. New South Wales political reporter Julia Bradley is in the electorate for us and uh, spoke to her earlier today. Julia, she wasn't giving a lot away, but I just thought there wasn't a clear indication that she's inclined to run, so maybe she's genuinely weighing up whether to do this or not. Well, Tom, I tried my best to try to get an answer out of her, peppering her with questions as to whether or not she would run in a neighbouring seat. As you said, the clear option there would be Bradfield. I asked the same question in a few different ways, but she really wouldn't be drawn on whether something whether that is something that she would consider. But no doubt behind the scenes, a lot of conversations going on now about whether that is something that could happen or whether, as you say, they keep in place the Teal Independent candidate who ran last time against Paul Fletcher, that being Nicolette Boll, in conversations that I've had within that movement over the past few weeks, they've suggested Nicolette was pretty locked in, a sure thing to run against. So we'll have to wait to see whether this call by the Australian Electoral Commission today would change anything. Now, shortly after that press conference that Kylie Tink held here, at Milsons Point Wharf. I was having a chat to her and she reminded me of the fact that on the first day that she was declared the MP for North Sydney, she was standing in this exact spot as it was bucketing rain. So really full circle today as we heard about the draft uh, proposal from the AEC. Kylie Tink expressing her disappointment. 
This whole experience of having an independent stand for and advocate for the seat of North Sydney was never about me, not even for a minute. It's always been about our community. As you alluded to before, if North Sydney is to be abolished, then we would see electors within that electorate flow into neighbouring seats, including Warringah, held by Zali Stegall, another independent, Ben Along, but also that seat of Bradfield, held by the Liberal Party under this proposed redistribution. We see that margin for Paul Fletcher drop. Interestingly as well, uh, some of the booths within North Sydney which Kylie Tink performed her best in at the last federal election, achieving primary votes of up to 30 per cent, are now flowing into that electorate of Bradfield. So paints a picture there of how this could be a real opportunity, but she wouldn't be drawn. It's very difficult for any person to predict where they may be in 12 months' time, let alone two years' time or three years' time. I have absolutely loved every minute in this role. I consider it a privilege. It wasn't an opportunity that I was still coming, but I've been very grateful to experience it. And I would hope that no matter what I do in the future, I will be incredibly committed to continuing to build on the work I've already done. I've just spoke. I've just spoken with Paul Fletcher one on one, his first TV interview since that news broke, asking him how he would feel if Kylie Tink was to run there. I'm not going to get into speculation about who may or may not be running uh, in Bradfield. Again, I'll make the point. Uh, in the six elections I've contested in Bradfield, there's always been a wide range of people uh, running uh, to seek the chance to represent the people of Bradfield. What's important is that the choice is being made by the people of Bradfield and not by an unelected billionaire's son from Melbourne. Kylie Tink, however, says that she does want to fight this uh, proposal. She wants her community to do so as well. So she'll be putting a submission into the AEC before it gets finalised later this year. Tom? Yeah, Nicolette Bowl, by the way, with her statement saying they'll consider whether they'll put further submissions in. So we'll see, but uh, certainly not shying away from running again. We will see. She's the independent that ran, of course, against Paul Fletcher.